constitution. And we're talking about whether or not, uh, you know, uh, the, the, our electoral system uh, should stay the same or should change. Of course, the, uh, the representative of the new uh, unity movement uh, will uh, join me at the, at, the, at the bottom of this hour to, to talk about the court case. The court case sitting tomorrow after being postponed just before the elections uh, when there was a, 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 an organization or a set of organizations that wanted to insist that independent candidates should run. I think there's a too much over-reliance on political parties. There's too much over-reliance, and I'm not sure where that comes from. Right. But if you look at our democracy, new and nascent as it is, there's too much over-reliance on political parties. There's somehow a, a, an embedded hope somewhere amongst, or, 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 or amongst all of us that political parties are somehow going to save us. And, and, <laughs> and, and there's also a habit of forming many political parties. I mean, if you look at just our short history, we have had so many splinter groups. Uh, from uh, particularly splitting from the ANC. If you look at the 60s, we had the PAC split sp as, a, as, a, as a chip of the old block from the ANC. You had the United Democratic Movement. It is left with a couple of seats now after also splitting from uh, the ANC. Uh, you know, and then you got PAC splitting, I think, into two splinters. There's a splinter from Azasco, Azasco no, not Azasco, sorry, Azapo. It's a split, left, right, and center. And then you had the COPE. That was a big uh, 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 letdown, you know, after much fanfare and, and, and almost, you know, lighting up a glimmer of hope after 2007. And, uh, you know, after the ANC was stolen, basically, uh, you know, there was a glimmer of hope there. But it all collapsed very quickly because the habits of the ANC did not split. They left with it. In fact, sometimes you are, you are sitting in a co meeting and you just close your eyes, you think you are in an ANC meeting branch. Same directionless, same greed, same everything. Not, there was nothing different except the name. Right? Then, uh, you know, then you, you had a split from, uh, there was a splinter from COPE to something else. I don't even remember what they call themselves. Then you, got, you had the EFF, another splint, splinter. Uh, from the ANC, <laughs> and, all of this, and, and all of them, frankly, not chipping away uh, seriously at, 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 at the ANC as a, as, as, as a big uh, political movement, right? Because there is this idea that, no, let me form my own political party so, so that I can also be my own in Duna, right? Then I could take a president of something, even if it's two people, I'll be president of something. It's bad. Our overlands of political parties is very bad. And clearly, with the statistics of 55% of people living in utter poverty, it's clear that that model has not made a difference in the lives of our people. It's only made it worse. It's only made for a almost 0% economic growth. It has only made it worse. It's only made it worse for young people who are unemployed, 55% of them who stay unemployed. But hey, political parties, ah, they, that's how they're creating employment. But yeah, no, 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 parliament. Even if I have one seat, I represent somebody. It's bad. And there was another organization called AIC. They just said, no, let's just have a name that sounds like an ANC. We'll get it with one or two seats, you know, and, and from that and then we'll be fine. It's terrible. And then it creates a, a whole culture of people who have never worked in their lives. Their job is to just be elected. If you want to switch off that type of political party, they are frustrated. But I still don't see if you are young, you know, as I feel front or back of, a, of just going to a job interview to work. Because I have a lot of people who are not going to be elected. I have a lot without ending it. And it's bad because there's, there's younger and younger politicians coming up whose futures are gonna be destroyed by laziness. Lives of people not changing. The lives that are changing are those of the politicians. But that's also temporary. I always say to politicians, 
whether they like to hear it or not, you are temps in my book. You are temporary. You'll be out very soon. You could be five years, ten years, you'll be out. And you'll have to struggle in the streets here looking for a job like all of us. It's bad our over-reliance on political parties. I'll tell you why. If you looked at, you know, even in our short history, of 25 years, some of the most dramatic developments that made a significant difference in the lives of our people were, in fact, not from political parties or government, were from the NGO sector. That itself is weakened now, because some of it now is in the pockets of the same politicians. You just have to look at what, uh, the, 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 what, what the HIV saga produced in as, in as far as uh, activism is concerned. Um, an organization, uh, its name doesn't occur to me now, went to court right, to say to government, you stop with your nonsense. Government at that point had every reason not to give ARVs to people who are dying like flies with HIV. You used to bury people every week. But talk of all. But talk of all about with something that could be avoided. Between the time that government was dilly dallying to the point they agreed that ARVs were the way to go or never been for, for children who were uh, innocently infected. 300,000 people were dead and buried. Shameful stuff. And I know about why can't take ARV. We have the biggest ARV program in the world. You got to kill a law, man. It's a silly law, man. It's that you have the biggest ARV program. It's not something to be proud of. But it's a shame in the first place that an NGO not elected by people, not sitting in parliament, not in charge of the fiscus, had to go to court to tell you who's elected to do the right thing. It's a shameful thing. Shameful, if you ask me. And we, we, we don't talk about it. Why live it? Now we have the biggest ARV program in the world, which you were forced to implement by an NGO. A civil society has got to know that it has the power. Even who talk about Christians, yeah, Afri Forum is, yes, but they're doing something for their own people. Where is the African or black Afri Forum that would take government to court for, for refusing to compensate a family of a youngster who died in the toilet because of his incompetence? Where is that Afri Forum? Civil society has become weak, man. Churches used to be, you know, at the forefront of struggle. Faith communities used to, used to know what it is to struggle and, 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 to, to, and battle it out on behalf of people. Ah, today, they have become another captured thing, fellow. You don't recognize a head or tail of it. In fact, some people tell me it, the politics in the church are somehow worse than politics out there, the mainstream politics. People poison each other in churches. Poison each other, buy each other's votes to become bishops and, 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 and people, who, people who are elected. And so it's a mess in the church. If in the church you got crooks. And last week we talked about some of those crooks who are using witchcraft to govern churches, a, a mess. Civil society, weakened to the knees. We got to stop it with the over-reliance on politicians because half of them are crooks. You are gonna replace one crook with another. You're gonna vote one crook, crook of group of crooks in and vote out another group of crooks. These ones will take a break. These ones will say, oh, it's our turn to eat. Until we are clear that politicians must be guarded fiercely in order for them to do even a fraction of the things they promise, then we are in trouble as a nation. You got to ask yourself, am I part of a movement who's, which is going to make some kind of difference? If I'm a youngster, have I joined a youth club that can make some kind of difference? If I complain about political parties, have I made time to be part of that political party and change it from inside so that they stop talking about the next conference? They stop talking about money bags. 
that are coming to vote so and so and, and not so and so, and actually be concerned that down the road there is a, a family a, a, that is headed up by a child, and they should make sure that that family does not starve. But look at the nonsense. So why are you doing all this? You ask yourself. You need to ask yourself that. What are you doing yourself, not your politician, because they're they always going to disappoint you. How are you shining the light in the corner where you are? As a young person, as a woman, as a professional, are you able to shine that light or you're going to think politicians are going to do something for you? You've got a, a clear track record of failure of our current system where we are over-reliant on politicians. These people are crooks. They don't care about you. You think that Zuma was drunk when he was saying the ANC comes first? He, he said, you don't matter. It's only that political party that's going to line his pockets that matters. Wake up, South Africa. Let's take a break now.